Vibrant, vibrant, vibrant music teaching. Proven and practical tips, strategies, and ideas for music teachers. You're listening to episode 85 of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. I'm Nicola Canton, and in this episode, we're unpacking a common parent statement that says a lot behind the scenes. Hey there, wonderful teachers. Today I want to talk to you about something that parents um, say a lot, at least in my studio, and I'm sure in many studios around the world. When you get an inquiry from a parent, do they ever say, I just want him to have fun? Or do they say, I don't want him to be a concert pianist or anything like that. I just want him to have fun. Those two statements often go hand in hand, from inquiries from new parents and maybe from parents who have already joined the studio, or they used to. Now I'm a lot clearer with what we are and what to expect, and so parents pretty much know what they're getting into once they've started. But I do hear that from new parents who are thinking about joining the studio, and I wanted to unpack it today because there's a lot of underlying messages in those statements from both sides. So let's start with what we hear when parents say that. What do you hear? Think of a few things now. What do you think is the secret message there? Often we think what they're saying is, well, I'm not going to help him with practice, or I'm not going to expect him to practice, I'm not going to expect it to be hard work. Or maybe what you're hearing when they say that is, they do not take your job and music education seriously. They don't think this is a real thing, they think it's just a bit of fun. Right? Is that what you're hearing? I don't think that's what parents are saying. But often what we want to say back to, I don't want him to be a concert pianist, is good because he won't be. That's nearly impossible. (laughs) But that's not what they're saying. What they're saying and the place they're coming from most of the time is either when they were growing up, they took music lessons and they had a really bad experience. It was not fun for them in any sense of the word. They did not enjoy it. Their teacher was mean or cruel or just too strict. And it turned them off for music. And obviously that's not what they want for their child. Or maybe they just have a stereotype. Maybe they never took music, but they have a stereotype in their mind about that strict teacher, perhaps the ruler on the back of the knuckles piano teacher. Unfortunately, that image is still out there. So often I think that's where they're coming from when they say, I just want him to have fun. And really, their real message, what they're trying to get across to you is, I want him to love music. And that's what you want too, right? So it's not anything that's fighting against what we believe in or what we stand for. But we do need to do a bit of education around this. When parents say that, it does show us that they have some beliefs that maybe we need to get rid of or shift in a different direction. So when a parent says this to me, particularly this happens at a meeting with a new student, an interview lesson, or it can be over the phone, of course, an inquiry, although I organize most things by email. So it's when they actually come in that they tend to say this to me. And the first thing I always do is reassure them that we do have fun. In fact, I usually do that before they've even had a chance to say this statement because I've heard it so much, and because I know what's on their mind, even if they're not going to say it. So, I explain to them how we have fun in the studio. I show them the challenge board, I show them the games, I explain about our concerts and parties and workshops and all of the stuff that I do to bring students together, to collaborate, and to make music together in a really fun environment. I also talk about our love of improvisation and the composing project we do every year. So coming from that, they already have a different perspective on what it means to take music lessons, what music lessons are going to look like in my studio, because they're not going to look like the stereotype that they have in their head. That's absolutely not what's going to happen. However, just as important as that, leading on from that, is the fact that I have to educate them to let them know that music is more fun when you have a practice routine. Because that thing that came up in our head, that alarm bell of this parent is not going to help with practice at home, 
That is true. Maybe they're going to be a little bit more reluctant to reinforce a routine to provide that structure because they think they're going to be sucking the joy out of it. Because if they learnt music as a child, perhaps that's one of the things they dreaded. But it doesn't have to be that way. And the way to make it better is not to make it looser, (laughs) in my opinion. It's to make it more of a standard routine. You kind of have to go all in with this. So, that's the education that we need to do around this statement. We need to tell them about how our studio is fun, but then we need to give them this piece of information, this key nugget that actually, if you establish a practice routine, if you help and support your child to practice at home, it's going to be more fun. Because making better progress, making faster progress, moving forward, learning cooler and cooler repertoire, learning pieces that you can show off to your friends, and feeling good about yourself and your accomplishments, That is where the real fun is. We know that that's how we got to where we are. We found that joy in moving forward. And that's why we put in the practice we did. But many kids are not going to find that on their own. Perhaps you didn't either. And so parents need to learn that if they put the routine in place, it's going to be more fun. The problem arises when you don't have a routine and then later on down the track, you try to reinforce it. Right? You're trying to reinforce something that was never there. You're trying to push a routine on a child who doesn't know the value of all these things because they've not been making progress, because they feel bad about themselves in the context of music lessons. So if you're not doing that education, I hope you'll consider putting it in place. Don't roll your eyes at those parents who say their kids just want to have fun or don't want to be a concert pianist. Don't just move on. Take it as an opportunity to teach them something, to educate them on why we do practice how it can be pleasant and beneficial and wonderful and how it helps us do more and more fun things. You know, this word fun has a bad, bit of a bad rap, I think you'll agree, in a lot of circles. And it's one of the things that I'm trying to work to fix because I think things should be fun. And I think don't think we should look down on pieces that are easy, on genres that are considered to be less serious, (laughs) genres of music, or on games and learning through games. As you know, that's something I believe in very strongly, and I believe that when we're having more fun while we're learning, we get addicted to learning, and we keep doing it even when it's hard. It's still fun in a certain way. So let's spread the word about the word fun and help parents to see things a little bit differently. While we're doing that, I'd love to hear from you about any things parents say that bother you because of something that you believe is hidden in that message, hidden meanings in what they're saying. Is there anything like that for you? I know we all have pet peeves and things, and I'm not talking about grammar errors or anything like that. I'm talking about statements that parents make that actually there's something behind it, or you perceive something behind it that perhaps they aren't even saying that means that it irks you. I'll give you one more example which is a bit different to the fun one. I know this comes up with teachers a lot and that's when parents, they don't do this in Ireland, but when they refer to lessons as practice. So from their side what they're doing is actually, you know, it's called football practice, it's called basketball practice, it might even be called dance practice. But it's not called music practice, it's called a music lesson, and the practice is what happens in between. And I get why people wouldn't like this frame, but parents are just doing it out of habit. So that's an example of another thing where we see something hidden in that message, we think they're not taking the practice part seriously, and that they're not understanding what happens at the lesson, but actually they're just using it because they use it for other things, and it's just habit. So do you have anything like that? I'd love to hear about it in the Vibrant Music Studio Teachers group on Facebook. Join us there and let me know about those statements that get on your nerves or that you believe have some hidden connotation or hidden meaning or perhaps stereotype behind them that you would love to remove from your studio. I look forward to hearing them. Bye for now. Members can now access the Back to Bach workshop plan inside the video library 
So if you remember, hop inside and jump over to the video library to check it out. It might be perfect for an upcoming workshop for you. And if you're not a member, you can sign up to access that as well as tons of other goodies and resources at vmt.ninja.